Hey, this is Adam with Space Dodo. Normally we're making video games, but sometimes we cover some related topics. And today we're going to talk about how to run Windows without Windows. Really, we're going to go through some tips about running Windows the best way possible to have the most performance and the least amount of crashing and just get the most out of what Windows was really made to run like. Make it run more like Linux, really. And that's everybody's goal is they want Windows to run like Linux. Uh, this is how to do it. Now, first off, a lot of my tips will not leave you with nothing but a command prompt to work with. But if you're not scared of this, stick around to the end and I'll tell you how to run Windows just out of a command prompt. It's easier than you think and guess what? It doesn't stop you from doing anything. So here we go. So Windows is just annoying. Things that run lots of stuff in the background break all the time and uh, cause lots of problems and get you get less out of your computer. Well, Linux is awesome, but Linux doesn't run a lot of the softwares that I need. Uh, Mac is expensive and it's also not as awesome as people say. I used to work in IT. I've seen a lot of Mac crashes. Windows is also not perfect either, but there's a way to make Windows a lot closer to perfect, a lot more like Linux. You can just kill a lot of stuff that doesn't need to be running all the time. You'll notice that I've already uh, went through the menus here and uh, gone to taskbar settings and removed all the stuff that I don't want showing up all the time like the weather and then here too I've right clicked and, re and hit remove to all the ads and stuff that pop up when I hit the windows bar those are quick and simple things that make your experience smoother next thing you can do we're going to talk about several the last one is a big a little more of a power user move uh, where we kind of get rid of explorer altogether and I'm going to talk about that one that's actually going to be the best bang for your buck uh, but we've got several more steps to do before we get there um, so if you go to your startup you can see there's a lot of programs that want to start up every single time your computer starts if you highlight them and hit disable this will say enable for me because I'm turning it back on but disable because I don't need Dropbox to run immediately I don't need iTunes helper to run immediately I don't need Steam to run immediately if you do need something to run immediately you can let it be there but most of these things do not need to run the second your computer starts up and they'll actually slow your computer down. The reason they say startup impact none is because they are disabled. Update checker, that needs to be disabled. There is nothing, I don't even know what this is for. There is nothing uh, that, this is, might be for the GitHub. Uh, there is nothing that needs to be running so importantly that uh, I can't run it myself when I need to do it. So disabling that's gonna help. So another great thing, is if you type in performance or adjust the performance uh, settings for Windows in your taskbar, you'll get the performance options. You can also just search performance options. Here I create a custom performance options where I only have show thumbnails, smooth edges of screen fonts, and smooth scroll boxes, uh, scrolling uh, boxes. And that is the only thing that I find that actually helps. Uh, you don't need to render this every time you move it around. You don't need to have shadows behind everything. All those are just nice things that make Windows look fancy but really just waste computer resources. So if you do that your computer will actually run a little smoother. If you go to the advanced tab you can also change how much page file you have and what drive that page file is on. I actually don't like page file on my C drive because my C drive actually gets full really quick because every program likes to throw crap on your C drive. I actually have a dedicated SSD and the SSD is going to have you get the it's how you get the best bang for your buck on uh, for Windows. Uh, I have a dedicated SSD where I've set up 16 gigs of page file, a burst of 32 gigs of page file. This SSD is really this is mostly what it's used for. It's just my big page file, and this makes big applications like Unreal run a lot better because it just has a lot of room to throw extra stuff that won't fit on my uh, 32 gigs of RAM. So, uh, and you might be thinking, wow, I have way more than 32 gigs. Awesome. Some of you might be thinking, I have way less than 32 gigs. If you have less than 32 gigs, you definitely need a good sized page file. A dedicated drive is the best way to go, but having a good sized page file in general, uh, that's not on a drive that's constantly filling up is better. Now, another note too, Windows is constantly running off C. So running programs off other drives and running your page file off another drive will actually help increase your computer's performance a lot because your drive is constantly reading and writing to your C drive. Your C drive is busy. So using things not on your C drive is a great way to have your computer be able to like not fight for what's going to get access next on your drive. That'll slow you, that'll speed your computer up a lot or it'll slow your computer down a lot if you're just using one drive for everything. Having multiple drives is a great next performance boost. So we've ran through a whole lot of tips. There's two more. 
If you open up services for Windows, you just type in services and open it up, you'll see that there's a lot of services and a lot of them are running automatically. Something I haven't done yet but I need to go do is just decide what of these I don't want running all the time. And uh, you can actually set it up to where you disable these services. Uh, and if you find out that there's a lot you're constantly turning off, you can even like automate a task to go disable these services uh, every time you start up. Um, but a lot of these things uh, are helpful, but a lot of these things are not. If you disable it and nothing breaks, probably didn't need to run it. I would stay away from things that say uh, anything that sounds like a networking term because uh, that's got a lot of this called your networking stack. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background, but there's a lot of things. If you see it like Xbox Live gaming service, uh, this isn't running for me right now. But if this is running for you and you're not using Xbox Live, you don't need this running it's just wasting computer services it's one more thing that could cause a crash so um, that is all the simple tips now this one requires you to have a different ethos about life um, this one is going to change everything so this is the command prompt and uh, you can, I have a whole tutorial about how the basics of how to use this. I highly recommend checking it out. Super awesome, super helpful. What if you didn't run Explorer at all? What if you just ran the command prompt right from the beginning? That actually will help a lot because the Explorer is actually has a, a high overhead as a shell for Windows. And so if you change the shell to the command prompt, you can still use Windows normally, right? You can still start programs from the command prompt and, and see graphical rendering. But just having the command prompt, being comfortable with navigating through files, doing some of your initial stuff through the command prompt, you can look, you can start the Explorer too. You can see you got everything right here. You just, what else do you need? But I have more explanation about how to use the command prompt too, but it's not as scary as it sounds. So that being said, if you navigate to H key local key machine software, Microsoft, and then Windows NT. It's going to be a lot of navigating. Windows NT and then current version and then Windows log on and select this. It'll say one of these will say shell and when you double click it, it says explorer.exe. You don't need that as a shell. You just need cmd.exe and then hit OK. Now I'm going to reboot the computer and we're not going to have this down here anymore. And it's going to be a change for you, but you'll actually realize Windows just runs better this way. It's really the way Windows was designed to run uh, without all the fancy stuff behind it. So uh, let's get going. I'm going to restart my computer and I'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to the big black nothingness that is uh, the command prompt. So I'm a little rusty. Uh, on using it, but I'm excited to get back to it. Uh, you can still use Windows normally. Common things like Chrome actually have a quick startup. So um, we've got to actually spell it right. Start Chrome and then boom, here's Google Chrome. Uh, so you still have like Windows running perfectly. Now, um, one thing when you look at your directories, like I said, it's not a tutorial. I have a tutorial about this. I'm linking. Um, this you can put a folder right here and call it shortcuts there we go now shortcuts exist um i'm a little rusty so mk i think linux i can't remember so here's what we're gonna do let's just start explorer and then look uh now when we go to c drive here's shortcuts what you can do is find any program that you launch regularly that doesn't have so like you can't just type in obs uh start that's just not going to work because it's not like a, a quick linked file, uh, a quick linked exe. What you can do, all your exes, instead of navigating to them and hitting start, you can just, the common ones you do, create your own little shortcuts here. And this is really what shortcuts are for. So for example, if I go to uh, C program files, OBS Studio, Ben 64 bit and then boom here is obs.exe and if i'm in if i type this whole thing in and then obs.exe whatever i could launch it or what i could do look at this right click it and copy and then this is called obs cx64.exe uh, and then we're going to go back here to the shortcuts and then hit new and then shortcut and then you just go boom 
slash OBS 64. Oh, look, it's right here in the dropdown, 64.exe. Next. And then we're just going to call this um, OBS and then hit finish. Now I've got a shortcut here. So now if I just CD shortcuts and tab complete, then I can just type in OBS and then boom, it tries to run OBS, but I'm already running OBS, so I can't run it again. But there you go. That's how to use Windows. It just, uh, you're good now. You can do whatever you want. Once you get your programs going, you don't need all that fancy stuff running in the background all the time. Once you get your program launched, it's launched. There you go. So, welcome to the future where things are actually simpler. If this video helped you out, please like it. Uh, if you are interested in like me talk, talking about creating video games and, and other similar projects like this one, but mostly video games, check out my channel. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.